Hello everybody, it's Larry and welcome to today's video and we've got something that I think you're really going to enjoy. We're going to talk about when you're dealing with census reports and other digitized information on Ancestry, we're going to show you some tools and some tricks that you're probably not using right now that will make it easier for you to look at, read, and understand what you're seeing. Before we get going, I wanted to say thank you to the supporters on Patreon. Uh, thank you to Ben, Bry, Sherry, Gary, Glenda, Joanne, uh, Lacey, Lori, Marcel, Mariana, uh, Ree, Sherry, and Terry. Thank you very much for your support. And let's get right to it. So we're, what we're going to do is we're going to start by going to a tree. And in this tree, we're going to pick out uh, an ancestor, James McFarland, because I know he's got a document we're going to want to see. Now, as we said in a previous video, one of the first things you're going to do is click this quick compare. And we see James McFarland, James McFarland. Uh, the spelling is different on the last name, but that was very common. Uh, 1833, North Carolina, 1832. I can't really tell. So we're going to have to click on and look at this document, which ironically, it's actually probably going to turn out to be him. But we're going to look at this document. So when I look at this, the one of the first things you're going to do is you notice I, if I click with my mouse button, I can scroll it left and right and up and down. Now, you've probably done this if you've looked at very many of these. And another thing you can do is you can use this little scroll bar to make it bigger. And uh, with uh, my prescription, that comes in real handy, and I do that quite frequently. Uh, you can hit the minus and the plus to make it bigger. Uh, the other thing you can do is you can double click. And by double clicking, it's kind of like the Google Maps. Uh, it'll actually make it bigger. Now, it won't double right click, doesn't make it smaller like Google Maps. So kind of a shame there. But if you double click on it, as you see me doing here, uh, that actually makes it bigger. So uh, that's one of the first tools that you can do. Now, this is where it really gets kind of neat. See this little hammer and wrench looking icon right here? Okay, I'm going to move my cursor around so you can see it. Uh, if you click on it, brings up this menu and then there's settings and this settings is something that you're really going to want to take advantage of so if I click on highlight households uh, what it's going to do ancestry uh, <laughs> one, it's this is a dynamic thing so you kind of get to see it in real time uh, it will refresh this at some point and uh, it'll actually highlight my households so why is it not uh, highlighting it? There it goes. Highlights the households, and it actually highlights actually even more in yellow the person that I was looking at. I was looking, as you remember here, for this James McFarland. Okay, so James was right here. Larkin uh, McFarland was his dad with Mary, and it was actually James Larkin. So it was James and Mary, and uh, you know, born right here. So I can't really see you know, what that is. So that's another setting we can turn on. So if we come here and we're gonna click on text tips, okay? So by doing that, when I click on the text tips, uh, well, I don't know why I'm having to click on those twice. So I'm, it's like I had to click on the on again. That's interesting, Ancestry, I think you may have a bug. The slider doesn't work, but if I click on the actual letters of the on, uh, it seems to work. So there's something a little glitchy there. But if I hover over it now, I get these text tips that tells me that NC for North Carolina, and of course these are the dittos. Uh, this says TE for Tennessee, so this Amanda Binion, it looks like, uh, was born in Tennessee, and the one above birthplace was a ditto from this North Carolina. So uh, that's pretty handy. So you get to see the family unit in green, okay and see how my mouse has that little brown wherever it's at until I get here you can see it kind of shades over okay until it gets to the person okay it lets me know where my mouse is so the James I'm looking for is in yellow and the family is there but we're not done this little tool right here has a lot of great tools look at this name labels okay and I'm gonna click on the, the on here now watch what happens when I scroll left nothing so ancestry we got a little bug there like i said we click on on now watch this i <laughs> definitely need to fix that we there's a workaround folks so if it's not working for you what you do is you come here and you just click on the word on after it's already slid into the right so the the slider isn't guaranteed to do it but if you click on on afterwards and it stays to the right and doesn't turn left see okay now it's going to come on but what that does is when you slide these names and maybe there's you know some in here you can't read 
Okay, so maybe this we can't read this one for sure. We slide it left. It says John R. McClure, McClue, and I'm pretty sure that's a McClure, but it says McClue. A. L. McFarland, Matthew McFarland, James McFarland, Mahala McFarland, Marion Larkin McFarland. So if this had been difficult to read by turning that on, okay, uh, that would have made it easier to read. And that is the name labels. And notice up here, we don't have column labels. On census reports, a lot of times it's hard to read. You know, you scroll up, especially with these older censuses when, you know, this is 1850. You go to the 40, 1840, 1830. But see right here, there's nothing. Watch what happens when we scroll up. We scroll up, we got the columns here. Age, it says age, sex, race, name, family number, dwelling number. Gives us all the information that we were looking for right there. Condition, okay. So uh, the column heading and we've got the name heading. And that's not all. Right here we've got uh, enhanced images. Now what the enhanced images do... Uh, it actually is like a contrast. It turns up the contrast quite a bit. And sometimes that's just enough uh, to make it readable. I don't know if that's going to work on this one. So let's see. See how it made all the text darker, but it also brought in some artifacts. Okay, so we're going to turn it back off, kind of see if you can see it. All right. It, it, it basically makes it high contrast. It makes the blacks really pop. And the last thing you can do, if you've got some that, you know, again, if it's really difficult to read and sliding left, if, you, if some of them just aren't indexed like that, so it's not going to work on all of them, and the columns you don't need, and you're clicking here and the enhanced didn't get it, there's another one, and it's right above the settings, and that's this invert colors. And when you invert colors, notice how everything turns white and black. And for some people, this is going to be a little easier to read. Some people it's not. Now, one thing I've noticed is when you have enhanced on uh, and the colors like that, the invert colors, makes it a little difficult, more difficult for me. I, I like the enhanced off with the invert because I get more of a pin line. So when I scroll in, it's actually like looking... Uh, at the line and for those of you who are used to looking at microfish uh, you know that's pretty much what this is but we can do the invert colors flip it back up all right so there you go you got the enhanced images makes everything a little thicker you've got the column labels turned on so that you can get the column labels up here at the top and you've got the name labels so when you pull it over to the left you get the name labels okay and then, of course, you can, you know, you can double click to, to zoom in. And then the text tips. You want to make sure that's on so that when you hover over it, uh, you see the name James McFarland, but also over here in the states, North Carolina, uh, TE is probably Tennessee, KY, Kentucky. Uh, let's see if there's any others right here, TE. Uh, I'm assuming that's Tennessee. It could be Texas, but I'm pretty sure it's Tennessee. 1850, it could be Texas. Uh, NC North Carolina, KY Kentucky, and so hovering over, you know, this right here, uh, that doesn't look like North Carolina, but if you hover over it, you can see real clearly what they are. Uh, there's IL for Illinois, and so this chicken scratch right here that looks right here for Illinois looks a, quite a bit like that. You know, you see this little C looking thing, and it almost looks like you got a little C looking thing. You got, you know, up, up, and down, up up and down so you know this tool tip is very very handy so if you haven't been using you know the text tips you want to be able to do that and then of course the highlight households and that's a, a real valuable one so when you're scrolling up and down on a page you know sometimes you pull up the census report and you're like where is my family but if you have the highlight families on it makes it very easy to see and very easy to spot your person because the family being green your person will be in yellow there you have it, uh, and this works on all of them. We'll, we'll pull up one more just to let you kind of see it. Let's go back to my tree, and uh, we're going to look at one that maybe the enhanced will work uh, a little better on. So we're going to pull up one for Samuel Jones. Uh, quick compare, Samuel, Samuel, 1833, 1833. Looks like it may be him, but we're going to look at this because it's a dead end for me. Uh, it's a will and probate, so maybe it'll provide information that would be good. Now, uh, we look at our settings, okay, we have enhanced images on, so it's a little thicker. If I didn't have those on, look how difficult that is to read.
That's a lot more difficult to read. Uh, the last thing that you can do that I think can help you out is this very top one. Okay, the very top one will make it full page, and you know, being able to see more sometimes on the document. Uh, sometimes you're trying to find where on the document your person is. So making it full page when you pull it and scroll around makes that a little bit easier. So do the enhanced image. All right. And that's the difference between it on and off. I have to click on the on. See how it makes the lines darker. And then on these, let's look at the invert colors. Okay. You can see the invert colors. And like I said, I... When I invert the colors, I like that to be off because it makes it, I think the lines stick out a little bit more. I think that's a little easier to read in some cases. I don't, but when you make it higher contracts, the artifacts sometimes, uh, you know, just tend to uh, come on there. So let's get that, flip the colors, okay. Have a little difficulty keeping it on. All right, so we got that. Let's invert the color now. And there you go. So sometimes the thicker lines, like right in here, makes this a little more confusing. Uh, v. J. Barnes and Julia something. So we turn that off and I don't know, Matherson or something like that. We don't have the columns and the headings because this isn't a census document. You notice right here, those extra text tips and stuff are gone. That's because these are simply digitized images. Uh, some of the information has been indexed, but you know they don't have, you know, the columns don't have the name rows. That would have been real handy. Uh, so sometimes scrolling out makes it a little easier. And then, but definitely the full page, you know, helped a lot because see how much clutter it took out. Uh, also, if you're looking at a census, I know that when I'm looking for somebody and I'm looking for uh, Samuel Jones, and let me go back to the census report for uh, James McFarland. So we're going to pull up his census, 1850 census. So let's say that I have a James McFarland and he's in this area. The last thing right down here, see this little part that looks like the film strip down at the bottom middle down here? If you click on that, that brings up the film strip. And that we're on page 51 of 120. So if I click on 52, it actually takes me to the next page. And there's been many times that I've gone from page to page to page looking for any other McFarlands, looking for any of the family, any other family that lived in the same area. So sometimes I know the, this is my family, but I want to get extended family because often family groups move together. So by clicking on that and going from page to page, you can find out more information. And uh, lastly, if you click on the people here, remember how we scrolled left and we got the names? Well, if we do this, it brings them all up right here. Everybody that's on the page, we can see it right there. So sometimes rather than just you know, pulling left and seeing this, uh, you can actually click on this person note down here at the bottom by the strip and it gives you everybody on the page, gives you their birth year, their age. And so you basically get this entire document, including this birthplace, uh, everything you got right here, and you get it in a nice, easy to read text format. And then you can go you know, from page to page and get the same thing by clicking this person. So there you go. There's the tools for you, the census and the other documents that are digitized on Ancestry. I'm pretty sure there's at least one or two things in there that you haven't used. Uh, it might be that you hadn't used the little people button here to pull it up. Maybe you hadn't used the film strip. Uh, maybe you haven't used that little button to make it go full screen. So you can pull it to full screen or you know you have of course all of these settings that you can use there you go hope you enjoyed the video if you did give it a thumbs up uh, if you found something useful i think that your friends will too pass it around to them i bet they'll enjoy this one because for those of us who have sourced a lot of uh, people in our family trees uh, we've used these census uh, records quite a bit so 
here's a way to get even more value out of those census documents. As always, I want to thank you all, especially you Patreons, for your support. And you guys have a great week.